Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. Today we have such a cool amount of news to share. You're going to enjoy it, so make sure you press that like button already. Having said that, let's first talk a little bit about XRP. XRP will have an insane rally if Ripple wins the lawsuit. Bear or bull market doesn't really matter. This specific subject is really the cause of a lot of debate around the interwebs. The question of how good will XRP price do if Ripple really wins the lawsuit? Let me give you guys the rundown real quick. Ripple will most likely win. Once that happens, we all believe that the XRP price will go back to all-time high as a basis. Why? Well, because if they never got sued, the price would most likely be a little bit above all-time high right now. But since they did get sued and the price went a lot lower, but then once they're done, there's going to be clarity. The price will most likely go to all-time high like a snap and then most likely a multiplier of what a lot of us assume, maybe three, maybe four in the instant. Some people think it's going to go times 10 or 20 even from all-time high. I'm not sure. I, I keep telling you guys, we'll see, but I'm waiting for at least like $12 per XRP as a basis because it's going to be the first properly regulated crypto. And I would be really let down if it doesn't happen. I'd most likely go into a little bit of a frenzy, then hibernation, and then uh, I, I don't really know exactly what's going to happen then. But I'm freaking excited for it, guys. I, I'm, I'm hyped up. Now, what we're also kind of wondering about basically is where the price can go before this is all resolved i mean think about it right now we are in an extremely bullish market ethereum hit an all-time high bitcoin hit an all-time high most awkward hit an all-time high xrp is extremely undervalued for the technology that they do have and for the fact that most cryptos can get the same lawsuit that xrp had just gotten why would xp be so low right now from that perspective potentially xp price could go back to all-time high if not five dollars before the lawsuit with the sec is even settled and that i guess brings us to point number two which is if it happens in the bull market the price will most likely already be higher as a starting point but it will have a multiplier and people are generally more excited in a bull market and so the multiplier can be greater now if we're in a bear market, the starting price is most likely a lot lower. And again, the lower the prices are, the less risky they get, and the higher the multiplier will be for that reason. And so bull or bear, they have different reasons for why the price can pump like crazy. But as we've seen with Shiba right now, Bitcoin went down like 8% and Shiba went up like 50. If the conditions are right, altcoins can pump to the freaking moon regardless of what Bitcoin does. And that's because usually... People just follow into altcoins kind of akin to what Bitcoin says to standardize as Bitcoin shows crypto, um, crypto stands and altcoins show some particular you know, differences basically uh, for every altcoin that's different. In this specific case, though, nobody cares about what the market is doing. Everybody cares about what the crypto is doing and the crypto, if it's doing something that huge, man. Yeah, I think people just buy it anyway. At least I would and most people I know would. So I don't know why all of a sudden things wouldn't happen in that exact fashion. Again, if you ask me, it's, it's like an open and shut case or closed and shut case, but all right. Now, some hype that I just kind of got uh, and, and saw was that Shiba Inu is on track to be listed on Kraken. Kraken is readying to list Shiba Inu, the cryptocurrency, and they basically said on their Twitter a couple of hours ago, Brian Schofman said, if we get 2,000 likes, which they got instantly, we will list Shiba Inu tomorrow, but he doesn't think we can do it. Shiba Army, where are you at? I don't really know why they didn't put like 50,000 likes as a basis because the Shiba army would have gone crazy on that. And even though it's a high number, they could have most likely tried it out if you guys get my drift. They could have, you know, they could have done a little bit better if they really wanted to. So I'm not exactly sure why they didn't. Uh, but that's definitely quite nice for Shiba Inu. Some of you are wondering, why do I talk about Shiba? I talk about whatever news there's out there that's really important and that's going trending. And right now, this stuff is going really trending, so I update you guys on it. Shiba Inu now accepted as payment at a French bistro in Paris. Uh, not huge, not amazing, but it's it's out there, so yeah. All right, proposed Build Back Better Act closes loophole exploited by crypto investors. I didn't know about this. Revelation of new legislation forming part of Democrats' $1.75 trillion social and climate spending plan would see tax loophole closed for crypto investors. 
The IRS sees crypto as property and not as securities. The legislation prevents crypto investors from claiming tax benefits on investment losses and then buying back the investment. <laughs> Interesting. Digital currencies will be subject to wash sale anti-abuse rules after December 31st if new legisl or legislation receives a majority Democrat vote. So uh, how this works, I'm not sure, nor will I want to explain it to you because these are tax loopholes. Do your own digging, all right? Do your own tax <laughs> due diligence. Just wanted to let you guys know that, uh, you know, if, if you know, now you know, right? If you knew you were doing something shady, you might want to watch out for that. Justin Sun withdraws billions of dollars worth of crypto from Ava's lending pools. Why? No clue, to be honest with you. I don't really understand why, nor did I know that he had so much money in there. Tron founder Justin Sun has withdrawn a significant amount of liquidity from DeFi's protocol Ava's lending pools. Sun's actions may be a result of recent accusations that there is a vulnerability in the network, although this has not yet been proven. And I have no idea. I haven't really seen the allegations or, or anything like that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. Here it says, like, urine founder Andre Konya tweeted earlier Friday that Ava is vulnerable to the same exploit as the one that impacted Cream Finance on Wednesday, which resulted in a theft of over $130 million. And uh, maybe don't badmouth other projects while sitting on an 11-figure vulnerability, tweeted urine core developer Banteg. Banteg later specified that he believed the exploit he had... Uh, has very specific liquidity requirements and was possible for 160 days in the past, but is not currently viable. Following disclosure of the resulting fallout, Ava founder Stani Kulichov tweeted that the crypto community should stick together, let's work together, support each other, and most importantly, win together, he wrote, which is obviously something that I really stand behind. I keep telling people we can all win together. There, ha there doesn't have to be like a very negative conscious like we see now between people, man. I mean, it's all love, all good. Tyler said, it's really weird that DAI is yielding 3.6% on AVA, while USDC is yielding 43%, and USDT yields 77 That's indeed kind of strange. For whatever reason, DAI holders are less concerned about AVA being susceptible to the same style attack that got cream.finance and haven't withdrawn their funds. Huh, very interesting, actually, if you think about it. Very interesting. I don't know. I kind of feel as if AVA will fix it because they're so big, and it's, again, it's one of my best investments ever. Um, then again, I'm also not really... Sure. I, I, I honestly don't really know what how far they are with all the fixing or whatnot. I don't really feel so scared. Mm. But I, I, I just don't have the knowledge, actually, to tell you guys about how scared you should be. Now, if Justin Sun, however, the founder of Tron and, the, you know, the, 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 I guess, the, how do you call it? The director of BitTorrent, as it currently stands... If he put all his money out of it, though, if he took his billions of dollars, and how could they take billions of dollars worth? Is he, is he that rich already? Um, not sure exactly. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I guess be careful. Let's, let me put it like that. All right, and just always being honest and open with you guys. If I don't know, I don't know. Ultimately, I think my knowledge might make people help a couple million dollars. If there's something I don't know, please help me out in the comment section. Please, guys, just do, always. It's, it's, it's worth it. You know, I always look for more tips and tricks to make more money, so I'm always good. If you put some criticism, I'm always happy with that as well. Now, Valkyrie pulls leveraged ETF application at the SEC's request. Valkyrie has withdrawn its leveraged Bitcoin ETF application after being instructed to do so by the SEC. A little update on that. Ethereum supply shock deepens. Exchange reserve declined 18% in five months. So it just kept going down and down and down and down and down. This is the exchange reserves right there. This is the price. Yeah. 22 million ETH on exchanges right there. There's an 18% decline of 4 million ETH balance on exchanges. Just keeps going down, and the exchanges have less and less Ethereum to be easily transacted, which basically means it's getting less liquid, by the way. But also, um, there's less selling pressure, so that's pretty nice. Algorand, Skybridge Capital CEO, explains why he's so bullish on Algo. In a recent interview, former White House Director of Communications, Anthony Scaramucci, who is the founder and CEO of global alternative investment firm Skybridge Capital, shared his latest thoughts on Algorand. Here's how Binance Research describes it. Algorand is an open-source, permissionless, pure proof-of-stake blockchain protocol for the next generation of financial products. As such, Algorand ensures full participation, protection, and speed within a truly decentralized network. Algorand competes with large payment and financial networks and focuses on industrial use cases. One of the more notably use cases involved the Marshall Islands plan to issue central bank digital currency. Furthermore, Algorand offers highly customizable smart contracts, asset tokenization, and atomic transfers built directly on Layer 1. 
Algo is the native asset of the Algorand protocol and serves as the medium of exchange and store of value. Algo must further be staked by network validators. Speaking in an interview, Scaramucci claimed that Algorand, a competitor to Ethereum in the DeFi space, is best positioned for real-world use cases. He outlined problems facing common goods and services in society and how crypto could be one um, used to, or basically used to solve them. In particular, he noted how consumers accumulate miles and other reward points for flying on major carriers but rarely use them. I mean, it depends, right? I mean, a lot of people do use them, so I don't know. Uh, what if we created a coin that could take those miles out of your account in exchange for this coin? That would be pretty cool, I guess. But I guess the same thing could be done for dollars, no? And they just don't want to. Then this coin had some universality to where you could buy groceries or you could buy something else. I don't know. I don't really like that idea too much in a sense that, theoretically speaking, they could just make miles... They could, they could have thought of so many easier ways of this so long ago if they really wanted to. But those airlines want the miles to be kept in this sense, either because you waste them, because, again, that's already built into their, their model. Or so you're going to book another flight, use a couple of miles to get some discount, but you book another flight and they make more money. I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't think this is really what they want to go for. Otherwise, they would have most likely done it a long time ago, give you vouchers or stuff or some specific sort of groceries and whatnot. Shark Tank Star says Middle Easter sovereign funds will drive crypto price explosion. Yeah, um, he is pretty excited about things. Kevin O'Leary is really, really, I guess, juicy on the on the crypto realm. The real opportunity is not with the family offices or hedge funds that operate out of the Middle East. Real money is in the actual sovereign funds in both Saudi Arabia and the UAE. It's billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. They have not allocated to crypto yet. When that happens, you'll see it reflected in the price of Bitcoin. There's no question about it. They have such long-term views in these funds, uh, and the funds are so large. I sometimes more so think about um, the fact that what they've done with gold is you know, interesting. What they could do with Bitcoin is even more crazy, potentially. And major Bitcoin miners and whales continue to amass their holdings. Data shows, guys, people are, are trying to tell you that some whales from old are, are, are selling or that some new ways are holding out here. All of that stuff is all relative. It all does not matter. Please, even with the Ethereum supply shocks or whatnot, don't look too far, far into it. Don't think that that's one little statistic is going to tell you anything. Because the fact that whales are ho hoarding or hodling doesn't tell you anything about the future. It really doesn't. You might convince yourself it does. Oh, yeah, but uh, some, some really rich guys are trying to buy more. That doesn't mean they won't sell it to you tomorrow. So what does that mean? That they bought more means they have more to sell. And so forth and so on. Even though some person was bullish yesterday, it doesn't mean they'll be so tomorrow. So from that perspective, none of those statistics really give you any uh, insight for the near future, except for the imminent and instant selling pressure that, for example, a supply shock like that, um, in, in literal words, might, might have as a result. For any other fact, it could just be people changing coins between between their, their wallets or whatnot. It doesn't really mean too much, my opinion on the matter. All right, guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today or tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to the channel.